Hi everybody. Welcome back to the Velvet Lounge cooking session. In the background we have Prince and the Revolution and the song is America. Um, today I am going to cook something that is a super special treat. Porgies. Um, you see me make a lot of sea bass and other seafood, but porgies are, they can come in various sizes. They can get really gigantic, which I do not like. These are the younger porgies, which are much better, much more flavorful. And also, I just don't like this particular fish when it's older. It has a different flavor to it when it's older. Um, these are, you know, about the, uh, smaller than the size of my hand, but they're not that small. They're, um, I'm trying to think, they're a little bit smaller than a Poland Springs single serve bottle. Um, but they're, like I said, they're not that, that small at all. They're definitely one of these is a meal for someone. So what I'm going to do is usually there are two, well actually there's like four or five different ways I cook small fish like this. One of them is I would obviously go the old fashioned southern way that my mother taught me and my grandmother by, uh, and my aunt actually, I have an aunt in Alabama who um, is a really good cook also. Uh, what I would do is I would usually put these, you know, clean them, spice them up, whatever, and then I would cook them using cornmeal and I would deep fry them in a skillet um, or in my fryer, either or for me. Um, they would always use a cast iron skillet. Um, the other way is, of course, baking them. That's when I'm being extra, extra healthy. Um, baking is always you know, healthier because you don't have very much oil or fat added at all. The other way is wrap, you know, once again, all these methods require you to spice your food, but um, is wrapping them in foil and putting them on the grill or open grilling them with smoke where we would put some foil on the grill. We would put some sort of probably a little bit of olive oil some people like using the um, spray olive oil out of the can. I usually just use it right out of the bottle. And then um, you would cup, put that on your foil, put it on top of the grill, and immediately you know, put your prepared fish on there. Um, if you do that, make sure you put a, just a few holes in the foil so that oils and fats or whatever can run through. Close your lid and let it cook. Um, so those are usually the ways I would make this fish. But today I'm going to make this a different way, which I, I occasionally do, um, but not that often, is I'm going to create a paste. I'm going to put um, slash marks with my knife into each fish, and I'm going to create a paste from the spices that you see here that I will actually rub onto the fish before frying it. And I'm going to open pot fry it this time in one of my large steel Italian made pots. Um, this is something I used to do a lot back at our other house um, before I purchased a fryer because I used to be afraid of the fryers. As I was like, that's a lot of oil. I have a young child here who was an infant to a toddler in that house. So I was always just concerned about safety, even though there was no way in the world she could have reached the high counters. But, you know, safe mom. So in a moment, I'll come back and show you what this fish looks like with the slit marks in it and start preparing my spice slurry for it. Knife. So here we are. I put the slit marks on both sides of each fish. You can see that. And the reason I do that is so that the spices will get right underneath um, and touch that meat. Um, this fish is trying to lose its head. 
yeah, we cook the fish whole with a head. Fish this size, technically you could cut the head off because there's really very little cheek meat. But on larger fish, there's a lot of this, there's this golden nugget of meat that's in the cheek and also in the fish collar that you don't want to waste. Um, this came from, these came from a friend of ours, Mr. Blackman who is an avid fisherman. He goes deep sea fishing here in New England in the Atlantic Ocean. Every single day that fishing season is open, that the weather is good, or he doesn't have something else to do. He's retired like I am, except for I own a business as well, but this his retirement is truly resting and doing, you know, stuff he wants to do. So, Fishing is what he loves to do, and he sells us these on the side, and you can't beat the price, and they're super fresh from the ocean. So I'm going to make my cookies aside and make my slurry. It will require a bowl, and you can use any combination of spices you like in particular. However, I'm going to tell you what I use. So what I'm going to use is some Old Bay seasoning. And because I'm using the Old Bay seasoning, I will not add any salt because I believe it's one of the first ingredients in this is salt. Let's see. So this will be my salt replacement. Actually, it, it's, um, you can see it right there. It's, if it's clear enough, it's celery seed salt, which is, um, they take the celery seed and the salt and they blend them together. So if you're using Old Bay seasoning, I suggest that you skip the salt. And how many grams of sodium is this? Um, for a, a quarter of a tablespoon, it is 114 grams or 6% of your daily salt. So. You know, definitely, I don't, I, I don't know what it is. I, ever since I was a child, I just never was a big proponent of salt. Um, maybe it's because my father liked a lot of salt on his food, but um, I just hate salty food, unless it's a chip or popcorn or something like that. So this is my ground ginger. You can also use fresh ginger in this. Um, you need a mortar and pestle so that you can grind it up until it becomes soupy sloppy. Um, but I'm using the ground powder variety because they created it and it's all natural and I'm good with that. I pre-ground this, but this is um, ground black peppercorn. I'm trying to put the lid back on. Ground black peppercorns. Then I'm going to put a healthy dose of garlic. You can also use your mortar and pestle for this as well with fresh garlic, but once again, it has to be ground incredibly well into a pasty consistency. I'm going to use some onion powder, and this is really a good recipe for ground spices or dried spices because if they're ground or dried already, you don't have to, like, it'll take a lot less time to make this. If you have to sit there and, like, you know, mortar pedestal, pestle and or grind up everything, because I have a dry spice grinder, then obviously that takes, you know, adds more time. And this is ground cumin. And uh, I'll try to give you some measurements of the granulated garlic. I used about five tablespoons of that. Yes, five. I know that seems like a lot. Of the onion powder, about a tablespoon. The ginger, two tablespoons. The um, black pepper, that's probably about a quarter of a teaspoon. The um, Old Bay seasoning, one tablespoon. And the reason I'm using one tablespoon of that is because I have four fish. Um, and next I'm going to use some um, dried dill. 
oops, sorry. Yes, I'm filming by myself. <laughs> so, um, you guys know how we are really unedited. Um, Daisy is in law school, so my camera person isn't going to be here often anymore. And Al has to work, so he's sleeping. So this is the dill. It's simply dried dill. I'm using about a quarter of a tablespoon of that. And the piece de la resistance is going to be my ground um, oriental peppers. And this is ground fresh chili paste. So you can buy this at any Asian market. I think they're selling it in some of the grocery stores now. And yes, I know you're like, wow, that's a lot of chili paste. I am going to use about a quarter of a cup of chili paste. Um, this is a sweet chili paste. I'll even taste a little bit of it. It's really good. Yes, it has a little, you know, for people who are, you know, can't stand black pepper. Obviously, this is a step you could, could um, skip over. Or, if you don't like pepper at all, obviously don't use the black pepper, don't use the chili paste. So, I will mix this up and show you how to apply it to the fish. So this is the paste after you mix it up. Um, and I just used a spoon to mix it. Um, it. And I made enough so that I can freeze some of this. So this is the amazingly awesome thing about using your chili um, paste is because it's already preserved in vinegar, etc. You can actually take, make a batch of this, freeze it, in individual you know um, servings for when you're cooking and before you cook you just let it thaw out use it you can only use it um, that day so you can't take it and refreeze it over and over again so you should put it in individual packets and then whenever you're making fish or chicken or whatever because these spices will work for a variety of foods or seafood in general is what I like to use this for um, shrimp um, it's great on fried calamari, um, any other fish that you make, um, octopus, etc. Then you already have this ready. So you just leave it out to thaw at room temperature and it's ready to go. I would not put this in the microwave because you're not trying to cook the spices and it will change the consistency. So if I shake this around a little bit, you can see it's a pretty thick paste. And what I'm going to do is simply apply it to the fish with my hands. So obviously you want to make sure you have super clean hands. You should always have clean hands in the kitchen. And you can, you know, work it into those little slits, which is why you created them. That was Prince singing Temptation. I love, I miss Prince so much. He was definitely a guiding force <laughs> um, when I was in, in the 80s, like doing my thing as a young business person. I was working in Connecticut and Boston for um, Connecticut Bank and Trust. So they used to have a private um, car service for me. To go back and forth and imagine I'm, I was only 19 years old when I started that job. I worked there, I want to say for five, six years, and it was in years four through six that I was um, going back and forth between Connecticut and Boston. It was awesome. And I remember listening to this um, on a cassette back then, and it was. Um, the name of it, the entire album was Around the World. I think it was, or is it Around the World? You know what? I can look because I have it here. So there it is. Yeah, Around the World in a day. So that became one of my phrases. <laughs> so what are you doing? I don't know. I think I feel like I'm going around the world in a day. Um... So just a little bit of history there. So once again, I'm just going to go through and notice I'm putting it in the cavity of the fish as well as on the outside because 
obviously you want your flavor inside and out. And you can see how it just sticks to the fish. My oil is heating up. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these fish and come back and show you what they look like in the fryer. So just one more thing about the seafood paste. Um, you might have to add, I forgot to tell you this, you may need to add water to it. I probably added a quarter of a cup of water to the amount of spices and um, chili paste that I used to make it the right consistency. Otherwise, it'll be too dry. So if you need to add water to make it pasty, then make sure you do that. Um, and here I have a little individual serving. This will be enough probably for two or three fish, especially if I do one large sea bass. This is enough for one large one. And this will go in the freezer and it's all ready for me to use. All I will have to do is thaw it out. So, you know, I just use, this is like the half lunch size, lunch bag size. This is usually the size I freeze it in so that when I thaw it out, I only thaw out the amount that I need. So as you can see, my oil is hot enough. So I am going to get my fish in there. I first have to hit play. Um, this is Prince's last album that he made. Um, it was part of the NPG, which is a new power generation with, I think it's called Third Eyed Girl, um, before he died. So anyway, I'm going to put my fish into this oil. Ooh, that's exciting. Be able to get at least three of them in here. There we go. There's three of them in there frying away. And when these are done, I will show you what they look like. So we have some excellent action going on here with the fish. So it's ready to be turned over. Actually, is it? Yeah, that's ready. See how good that looks? And your spices are stuck to it nicely. I don't know if I can do this with one hand, but I'm doing it. So. There we go. So I'm going to give it about three or four minutes on this side. Some people like their fish hard fried. Some people like it soft fried. I know my father likes it soft fried. I like mine right in the middle. So um, on the first side, I let it cook for about four minutes, four and a half, five minutes. And on this side, like I said, it'll just be three or four minutes and the fish will be ready to be put on a serving platter. So our fish is done. I have a fish platter here. I'm just going to, this is a vintage flip fish platter from the 1960s. Um, it's large enough to hold a huge fish on it, but I'm just going to line this with some paper towels. And I do that just to catch the excessive oil. You should let your fish sit for like a minute or two before serving it. I'll take this one because it'll be easier to get out of here. I know I should be using my tongs, but I'm not. Oops. That wasn't very elegant. I hope I can get this out without, otherwise we'll have to pause and get the tongs because now, okay, here we go. I wish you could smell this. It smells so good. Now remember, of course, we fry this fish whole, so therefore you will have bones. 
I'm going to put my last fish in. And I'm going to set up a plate, and when I get back, you'll see a completed meal. There's nothing better than music in your kitchen. So, our meal is done. I am serving this with some brown rice with mushroom and onion in it, as well as other spices, etc. Some homemade, homemade coleslaw. And of course, there's our crispy fried with a paste for spices, whole fried porgy. Um, there are the friends in the platter that will also be unfortunately eaten, but we will really enjoy these. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please subscribe to our station. Please share us on Facebook, Instagram, or anywhere else. We gladly welcome that, as well as if you have any comments or thumbs up for us, we'd greatly appreciate that. And take care and happy eating.